This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is a show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling. And uh, today we have uh, another special guest with us after doing a long, long Mayhem Show. So forgive us if we're a little punchy. It's kind of late. But in the meantime, go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, check out uh, this and other shows going on and all the pack pa- catalog for the Indie Mayhem Show interviews uh, on that site and IndieWrestling.us. Also, check out uh, a lot of other content with a lot of people that we talk with on this show on IndieWrestling.us and the new Indie Wrestling Network. And start your seven day free trial over there. Also, drop us a line at the email address goodtimes at wrestlingmamshow.com and 412 206 WMS0. Uh, let us know if there's any announced interviews coming up, any questions you might have for our guests, or anybody you think we should be talking uh, to on the show. We take a lot of suggestions, and that's how we end up talking with people like a, a boar from Chikara, for instance, uh, and other awesome uh, wrestlers out there as well. I think Effie was a. Was a uh, uh, recommendation and now he's choke slamming uh, little girls on the indies so he's come so far uh that's the mayhem bump uh anyway he's with us uh another guy that's been doing a whole lot in wrestling we just have a man i'm talking about his insane schedule joe dombrowski my good friend back on the show hey i don't know what you're saying about getting punchy man i'm just hitting peak hour right now. it is peak hour this is usually when i'm getting the questions on facebook from you pretty much yeah this is what i'm getting getting into my uh my late night work groove, things are kind of being isolated a little bit, and I can just focus on uh, uh, all the insanity that goes on. The up here. nighttime is the right time, especially for pro wrestling. They say that um, both geniuses and the clinically insane do their best thinking at night, and it's up to you to decide which category I fit into. There you go. There you go. Um, of course, uh, disclaimer for anybody new to this uh, Joe and I have worked on a lot of projects together over the years. I think Montreal Theory, that one time with Virgil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one time that felt like a thousand times. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so many shows, Prime Wrestling, Premier Welterweight. Uh, you know, uh, of course, carried over on IndieWrestling.us. So I wanted to touch base with you in general because you just hit a milestone. Of course, you're the evil genius behind uh, Premier Wrestling these days up in Cleveland. And uh, and uh, you just hit your now. It's a let me get the numbers right. It's this two year anniversary at Turner's Hall, but officially three years. Yes, we had shot a pilot show, mm-hmm. 2015 at the West Park Party Center, um, just to see how the promoter and I felt. You know, working with each other. Uh, promoter was new to the business. Uh, he was still, you know, getting his feet wet and experimenting with things. And we had did uh, the event, which is available on IndieWrestling.us. We had Johnny Gargano, Tyson Dukes, Matt Cross, um, Dylan and Rachel Bostic, a um, number of others on the event. Uh, Idris Abraham, who is, who's gone on to do Impact Wrestling, a number of others. And... Uh, some things worked, some things didn't, as any pilots do. And uh, we kind of went dark and dormant for a while. But we came back the next year with a new building and a uh, bit of a new philosophy and a and, and, uh, long-term approach and business plan. And here we are today. So um, it's exciting. It's been three years since that pilot. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we're still here. And you know, anytime in independent wrestling, you, you can't really think too long term because you don't know what can happen at the drop of a hat so much can change um but i'm very thankful and and honored to 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 be here for those three years and um the talent i've had a chance to work with and and some of the moments that 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 talent has been able to create in the ring um some of my favorite things in my entire career honestly and there's there's so many guys there that are really really good and either this area hasn't realized it yet or sometimes even they don't realize how good they are yet but they're growing and it's it's such a it's such a perk and it's such a a great feeling to watch guys and girls start to get it Mm -hmm. and that's what platforms like that are for 
You know, you're not going to have the best moments of your career, but we can get you ready for those moments. Absolutely. And, and, and I'm, I think early on, we had the conversation with you because, of course, you were involved with Prime Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Ohio up there. That was a, a program on Sportsnet Ohio, and uh, that was a whole other kind of experience for you. And and, and and I remember we've had discussions about, I think, you were being burned out and you got into this. Like, looking at it, like, being two years into that after kind of taking the dive again as well. Um. Yeah, the, 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 the prime wrestling slash PWO environment was so different because we were doing weekly television mm-hmm. and you had deadlines and you had um, producers and directors. You had a network to talk to. It was a lot more fever pitch to an extent. There really wasn't a lot of downtime. Uh, I can produce an event in Cleveland now and take the week, the week to kind of recharge my batteries and then start to refocus and, and, and build back up to the next event. Um, Prime Wrestling was just show after show after show after show after show for for six years uh, to the day. And um, it's so much easier doing Premiere. It is so much easier because you don't have to do um, that television aspect you're mm-hmm. producing a live event and of course the dvd the mp4 later and the social media is, is a lot more expansive than it was back in the day um so a lot of those elements go into it but um i also have the advantage of hindsight and i think there were a lot of times back in the pwo era where i probably had a stick up my ass because I was so pressured into making everything work mm-hmm. to its utmost degree. And if something, if a little thing faltered, you know, tensions are, are high and like, what do I do? What do I do mm-hmm. now? Now I'm just laid back. Like what more can wrestling do to me? <laughs> What's left? <laughs> we, we kind of joked earlier tonight about the, uh, the ring falling apart at like, the yeah, intermission the, on an eye pay-per-view ring broke on pay-per-view. Like yeah. I, I've had to eat, uh, I've had to eat turd on other people's scandals. I've yeah. I've I've made money. I've lost money. I've I've had amazing highs. I've Kevin, had my heart broken. Kevin gnashing ravioli with you is a meme. Yeah, <laughs> and then they put olives in a salad, and he yeah. doesn't like olives. No, no. I, that's what I learned in the interview. He didn't like olives, and he breathes really heavily into the mic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like like at this point, it's just like. All right, something screwed up. What? How do we fix it? On to the next. You know, mm-hmm. like how do we make the best out of it? So, I'm coming in with a lot better perspective as a booker at 32 than at 22. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that helps a lot. I'm very proud of the prime run and the the uh, PWO run, and I'll be I'll be selling Gargano matches till the day I die, and I say <laughs> that with pride because I love that kid. Um, but now, I it's a little low pressure because it's a little bit of a smaller stage. And I can take those young guys and cultivate them a little better rather than worrying about, okay, you need to be ready now because there's all these thousands of people watching. Yeah. Now, now let's get you ready. Let's get you on that path. And there's six, eight, ten guys on the roster that you can look at over the past two years that have very, very noticeable change. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, water weight wrestling, you build a longer. Um <laughs> trying to hold that back shut uh, up <laughs> but uh what are we wrestling uh you're coming up with your fourth event mm-hmm. this has been kind of a uh kind of a uh, offshoot co-brand of premier wrestling yeah. it's on i pay-per-view um and and again i got the witness uh, uh well actually i got the film ringside uh what three and it's really cool to see that kind of stage for this this level of or size of i guess wrestler yeah, and I, I just think that's the next progression. That's the next niche that really hasn't been tapped into yet. Now that the cruiserweights have their home, now that um, the smaller and smaller athletes are getting the respect that they are due, um, let's give them an even playing field so it's not the 150-pound guy getting thrown around by the 250-pound guy. It's a 150-pound guy in there with a 160-pound guy. And let's see what they can do. Let's see let's what see, they can do. Go. And we've seen guys, um, veterans, of the sport, like a Jason Kincaid, like a Gregory Iron. Um, we've seen young guys that really you know, don't have that handle yet, mm-hmm. like a Sean Phoenix and an Alex Jordan, like an Atticus Coger, like a Lee Moriarty, who don't have that, that broad-based national name yet, 
um, but have the tools. And they're adding to that tool belt every week. And they're starting to put those puzzle pieces together. And you, you add them in a locker room with guys like Kincaid and Ophidian mm-hmm. and Trey Miguel, um, Gory, Bostic, uh, guys like that who, um, you know, Gory is, is one of the most underrated guys in this entire business. You know, give him 20 pounds of muscle. He can work anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. anywhere in the world. I'd put him in a Ring of Honor locker room. I'd put him in a New Japan locker room. I'd put him in an Impact locker room. And he's been having incredible matches. We just saw one with yeah. uh, Jeff Cobb a few weeks ago with IWC. Oh, stole the show, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Bostic's very underrated. Mm-hmm. Bostic's underrated because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get a lot of the GIF attention. He doesn't go out there for the style points. Mm-hmm. Goes out there to be a dick. He is a dick. You know, uh, Ace Perry, Gavin Glass, Nate Wings, Sonny Vice. Young guys who are beginning to get this underground following, mm-hmm. but they're relegated to the workhorse match or the opener match or whatever it is. And um, when I think of guys that have improved over the past two years with us, Ace Perry's one of the first ones that comes to mind um, because he came in with a lot of bad habits and he came in a little bit headstrong, um, but in a good way because he was confident. Mm-hmm. But he just needed to be showed there's another direction. Look over here. There's. You know, not to steal quotes from Matt Seidel and Impact, but expand your mind. You know, open your third eye. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. And and to give these guys a chance to be the show, to be the main event, is so cool. Nate Wings is five foot three, hundred and thirty pounds. Is he the tiniest guy there? He is very tiny, yes. Like, because we, we, did, we did have, like, all of your water weights interview with our six foot something interviewer yes uh, so, you so know. some of those went better than others yeah. what I hear. <laughs> um but yeah nate wings is the littlest welterweight but he's got the biggest heart right it, and it may be cliche but it's true nate wings is so fun to watch mm-hmm. he's, he's just special because he does something in the ring almost every time he's in a premiere or welterweight ring that i've never seen before mm-hmm. and for me who's seen everything that says a lot so right. nate is very very special and, and you guys are at Turner's Hall. We, we, I think we talked about it a little bit bef- before, but I want to touch on that briefly because it has so much history there. Decades. Like decades of wrestling. Boy, All Pro was there. Cleveland All Pro with JT Lightning. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I started there. In uh, my first proper Cleveland booking was with JT in 2006. Mm-hmm. So he gave me that opportunity. Without JT, there would have been no PWO or Prime Wrestling, and as a result, no Premier Welter. I had a good conversation with uh, an associate of ours um, about like those days, mm-hmm. about those you know that show and and that being t- on TV and things like that 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 led to the PWO. Like I I'm my 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 history of Cleveland wrestling stops at PWO personally, but uh, you know it's it, interesting how far back that goes with things like that. Yeah, yeah, and and Turner's Hall is where. Uh, M Dog Twenty, Matt Cross, and Josh Prohibition learned to wrestle. It's where Johnny Gargano learned to wrestle. Mm-hmm. It's where Johnny Gargano started teaching people to wrestle, like Gregory Iron, like Matt Justice, um, and other promotions have had runs there as, as well. It's it's hosted more wrestling than than probably any building within God, couple hundred mile radius uh, that I can think of, at least at least. So, um, and that place had closed down for a while until we got back in there. It was it was it was locked up up for sale off the you know on the market but just you know you weren't able to to go in and rent it and run a show mm-hmm. but uh we got the doors open and we were able to add a new chapter to one of the most storied legacies in cleveland independent wrestling and and, and bring a, a new brand of wrestling two new brands of wrestling there and uh it's been really cool sometimes it's surreal walking in there and just thinking back to to memories of all pro and like 18 year old gargano and uh, you know Cleveland All Pro Champion Tracy Smothers oh, doing his thirty five minute promos. My almost slap all two hundred fifty two of you. Chant Tracy <laughs> sucks, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ultra mega mass homicide, man. Everybody dies straight up. <laughs> Love that. Check out my YouTube page for literally every Tracy promo from Turner's Hall in the All Pro era. Just thirty five minutes of him threatening to slap and kill people. <laughs> That's the most hits, right? <laughs> it's up there, man. It's up. That and the Tracy Smothers dance break I posted. If you ever just are having a bad day and want to watch Tracy Smothers dance for about like 65 seconds, hit up my YouTube. 
<laughs> that's amazing um we were having a great conversation about social media and things i, and I encourage everybody to check out wrestling ma'am show uh 300 and no 632 hey give myself more credit there we'll, we'll, put, uh, we'll put like a time stamp in the lower third yeah in, in post so no, people i probably know where won't. to go i probably won't it plus this is a podcast too so <laughs> I'm, t- I'm just t- I'm just trying to help people find it. Uh, but no, please go check out uh, uh, over there too. But um, uh, it, you know, generally, you know, you're, you're everywhere. You're you're kind of uh, guiding some of the younger talent up there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting I'm getting images from our last show still. Uh, and uh, you're back on the road with Ring of Honor. I think since last time we talked mm-hmm. uh, on this show, at least, right? Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that because we 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 discussed a little bit about like you keep coming back around to it. And I know you've been you've been with them since, geez, a while, since before we did Montreal Theory. My first my first Ring of Honor event was voicing over January 2010 SoCal Showdown, mm-hmm. and I had a nine month run there. Uh, where I did all of the straight to DVD releases with and and for longtime fans, this is about the timeline of Tyler Black, Seth Rollins as Ring of Honor World Champion. Mm-hmm. I was I was lucky enough to call that and and kind of be the voice of that run. Um, so you're on those uh, best of DVDs that are floating around probably right now. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the Steen Generico feud I was there for. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Roderick Strong, Austin Aries, a lot of great things. Uh, Kings of Wrestling, Briscoes, Machine Guns, so much good stuff. Um, but I had a nine month run there. I did a couple of the eye pay per views. Did Death Before Dishonor. Probably the most the most remembered match I called there in that run was Tyler Black and Davey Richards for the world title in Toronto. And my last show there was uh, Glory by Honor, uh, I think September 11th, exactly, in New York City um, of 2010. And at that point, uh, they kind of streamlined their announced teams. They went with Kevin Kelly as the lead guy, which was 100% the right call. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready for Sinclair TV. They needed an established, experienced voice. So I kind of went dark for a couple years, and I came back around as basically Kevin Kelly's fill-in. Whenever Kevin had a family obligation, couldn't make it, he knew he could trust me. Uh, the The office there knew they could trust me, so I'd come in and, you know, I, I'd do the Undertaker schedule. I'd do one or two dates a year, you know. <laughs> uh, I did. I did. Uh, I did the first ever Field of Honor in Brooklyn, which was really cool. I remember the picture floating around of you and Carino in the <laughs> field. Yeah, I, I did. I did one episode of TV on Sinclair Road Rage episode uh, from Virginia. Um, did a house show in Cincinnati. Um, did a loop in Milwaukee and Chicago Ridge when Samoa Joe did that brief comeback before in between Impact and, uh, and NXT uh, called Joe and Elgin in Chicago. That was fun. Um, and then Ian Riccoboni came on the scene and Ian kind of slid into that second tier spot mm-hmm. because he was just fresh out of the Monster Factory and was able to go full time on the road with them. And I had commitments all over the place. So that kind of put me dark again. But then Kevin parted ways with the company. Ian got the Kevin spot and now I'm in the Ian spot. Um, another lesson, the young talent show up mm-hmm. because I remember that it was o- last October stage AE in Pittsburgh. And was I, it, was that the new Japan crossover show? Um, I think so. Okay. Um, it was just one of those things where anytime they were in town, I'd come hang out, shake hands, visit mm-hmm. some friends I didn't get to see that often. And uh, I remember being just kind of feeling a funk and a bad mood. Well, you know, um, just, a little, just a little emotionally spent. Noth- nothing, nothing bad, but just one of those blah days where you just want to sleep it off. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, I, I should show up. I need to show up. And I showed up with... You know, not booked, not on the show. And like, well, yeah, we got a future about a match if you want to call it. And calling that match kind of reintroduced me to the office there and like, oh yeah, this guy doesn't suck. Um you know, dug what they heard, and as soon as we got around just some date issues over the next few weeks of just my other commitments, um every show you can get to, come to it. Every show you can't get to, we'll send you the footage to voice. So I've been on every episode of Future of Honor throughout uh, 2018 um, and a few of them that, that ended up 
ended 2017 and it's been great it's been my my longest most consistent role with them yet uh they treat me well uh they you know they like what i do and i like being able to again kind of like premiere in a way work with young hungry talent who want to make it and want to get somewhere and they're very thankful and appreciative when an announcer comes up and says hey what's your story what are you about why are you here what can i say to make the people connect with you and a lot of people are thrown off. We've never been asked this before. Mm-hmm. Well, those guys aren't doing the job then. I'm here to get you over. I'm not here to get me over. I'm not here to, you know, verbally jerk myself off just to hear the sound of my own voice. I'm here to do a job. I'm here to make people care about you in the hopes that you can get a job. I got a job. I'm I'm fine. Um, I like being able to do that. And uh, 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 you know, the more you're around the horn, you start seeing some of the same faces, and and building that rapport, and it makes my job easier. And uh, I hope to be there for a long, long time, and and hopefully that that role and and that spot will only continue to increase as the company expands. Mm-hmm. I noticed that you've been paired a bit with J Rock. Correct. That has got to be fun on commentary. It's uh, you know, sometimes I'm giving it up one time under duress. Mm-hmm. Um, I refuse to give it up two times, though. That's just too much. That seems it's like overkill. the limit. Yeah, yeah. That's overkill. Uh, yeah, but J Rock's a natural talker, mm-hmm. and no matter what he's doing, whether he's on commentary, whether he is in the ring, I have been pulling a lot of clips of him from uh, RWA where mm-hmm. he gets uh, into it with fans, uh, exactly. just because they're entertaining. He does the same thing in in, in Cleveland, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I saw a little bit of it Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Premier's <laughs> anniversary. It was J Rock and Sean Phoenix. Uh, nearly burned the building down. Yeah. But, but after that, they had a good match. That's not figurative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. When we say they tore the place down, we're not we're not using metaphors. No. Um, but yeah, he. I mean, he has the natural gift of gab, and he's got a radio background, mm-hmm. so that was a very easy transition for him. Um, lately, I've been doing a little bit more with QT Marshall, who has uh, a former wrestler there and now runs a training school down in uh, Atlanta with Glacier. Oh, and it's one of the affiliates of the Ring of Honor Dojo, along with MCW, Team 3D, mm-hmm. and Monster Factory, to kind of scout the next generation talent. Um, so sometimes it's a revolving door, and sometimes it's just me alone in my studio at night. <laughs> um, but either way, you know, I love it because we're getting a chance to tell stories and um, do justice with these guys, and, yeah. and and make sure that that the moment is what they want it to be and as best we can. And we we're talking a little bit on the show about Ring of Honor and how they kind of have a multimedia tiered thing. Like we, you know, the show is like the syndicated thing, kind of has a little bit of an old style to it because of the way it has to be for syndication, right? And then you have a future of honor, you have women of honor, and things like that too. Uh, you have Honor Club, so like it, it the, they're moving into this like nice space online with things. They are, and and it's so great to see so many different facets um, surviving and thriving. Women of Honor gets a tremendous amount of traffic. Mm -hmm. Um, Honor Club is growing by the week and adding more content and more subscribers. And then you you look at selling out Madison Square Garden. Jeez. When you you go back through pretty much every generation of McMahon that is promoted, I don't know the last time wrestling has been there, uh, that it was not a McMahon-run operation. You know, you know, you've got Vince Jr. now. You've got Vince Senior. You got Jess McMahon before that, the promoter of wrestling and boxing. I can't tell you the last wrestling event that was there that wasn't McMahon operated. That is something I honestly can say I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. Somebody coming to Madison Square Garden, period, mm-hmm. because that was always home. Vince was the Garden is the Garden. You know, that's 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 the sanctuary of WWE. That's where it it all started. That's Bruno and Backlund and Hogan. That was. Always the barometer that they would judge. Well, if it gets over in New York, it'll get over everywhere else. Well, now Ring of Honor and New Japan are getting over in New York. And I don't even know if he sold out his last house show there. That's crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. Um, So it's so cool, man. Ring of Honor was, you know, I don't want to say the cliche, little engine that could or whatever, but ask anybody 10 years ago, unless you were, you know, in the company. And trying to build it, I don't think anybody would have said some of the things that they've done they'd be able to do. Mm-hmm. But here we are, and I think I honestly think the biggest years are yet to come. Uh, 2017 was their best business year, easily, and I think 2018 is on pace to top it. I think 2019 is going to top it because you know if, if, if there's any indication with the MSG thing, 
and, and it's been a collaboration thing. That's been fascinating to see too, because you see the the you know I mentioned the Ring of Honor, uh, New Japan shows. Um, All In is an independently run thing that's as of this taping um, happening this weekend. But there's definitely, I mean, they're getting they're getting at least some assistance or at least a nod from the Ring of Honors and everybody involved. Well, it's on like, Honor Club, and right, I mean, there's, right. there's talent that's exclusive to ROH. There's talent that is contracted, if not exclusive, to Impact. It, it truly yeah. is a, a multiple... Open thing. Yeah, multiple yeah. communities coming and, together. And you see Impact Wrestling, Lucha Underground working together. That's uh, the and with these other indies and things. Like, it's bringing this... It, it, like, it, it seems that we'd be, we're bringing this... We're putting arms around this whole other section of independent wrestling and making something bigger and, and kind of acknowledging it all as a kind of a, a whole field because the landscape has changed so much mm -hmm. back in the day it, you know television was the holy grail and you had wwf wcw and if you were lucky you could find an ecw or uswa or something mm -hmm. like that and you know the 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 um by and large mentality was well you don't mention the competition out of sight out of mind wwf didn't mention wcw vice versa and i grew up not knowing there was a wcw until somebody showed me this glorious magazine in school and i'm like what is this wrestling pornography you have <laughs> exactly so you know back in the day you were able to sweep the competition under the rug more mm -hmm. now everybody's everywhere and it's it's silly to pretend that there's not a ring of honor or there's not an imp. I mean, WWE is going to do that because they obviously still have so much of the market share, but for impact, for Lucha, for ring of honor yeah, to yeah. pretend the others don't exist and not try to draw from those fan bases just doesn't make fiscal sense. And, anymore. and even to the point where WWE now acknowledges those, we are seeing impact footage. You know, they have a lot of those guys and they have deals and then say, hey, go check in out way, the yeah. GWN. They, they acknowledge them in ways that enhance their guys. Of, of course. Yes. Of course. But there's all there's always like that nod of, hey, here's Kevin Owens. And they like exclusively talked about the storyline, the Generico yeah. storyline with Kevin Owens uh, over there, Steen over there. Uh, they're showing like uh, what happened with, you know, the Hardys when they were in Impact Wrestling and talking about the background and even the bad stuff with Jeff. Right. Yeah. Like there's this like. And plus all the stuff about their, uh, you know, connections with Evolve and WWE and everything. It's it's really interesting what's happening now. It is. But, I mean, again, that's the future as, as a collaborative effort. And um, you can benefit your bottom line. The more affiliates you have working with you to help produce content, impacts Twitch channel. I know it's a big part of their business model right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, Honor Club is going to continue to expand. And... You know, there's so much content out there um, that's up for grabs. I remember the, the the TNA show I worked in 2015, sitting down with one of their officials. And, and back then, they were asking me, well, how many hours of footage do you own? We were thinking about, you know, launching something. Mm -hmm. that, so this has been in development for a very, very long time mm -hmm. for, for, for these companies. They've seen the future and the big picture. And, and we're living in that future now. And... Mm -hmm. uh, the level of content is only going to get more and more expansive. And at that point, I think just your, your higher end indies are going to be up for a bidding war and that's going to help their bottom line. And um, there are some drawbacks to it, just oversaturation and things like that. But I think we're truly in an age of more so Darwinian than ever, where you have to stand out and you have to be special. Mm -hmm. to be able to last in this business because it's not it's not back in the day where if you're in Georgia, you're watching Georgia Championship Wrestling. If you're in Memphis, you're watching Memphis Wrestling. No matter where you live, you have access to a hundred different promotions right now. That's not even an exaggeration. That's right. It's been, it's been fascinating. I, I know we see with our communities, like, you know, you in the chat room with us tonight, you, you, you know, I, I try to call up like where people are coming from. We have people from LA. We have people from Seattle. We have people from Kansas City in the chat room tonight. And they're all looking at what, we're doing here in Pittsburgh and Cleveland and vice versa. You know, it's, it's just kind of pulling all that together. It's amazing. So, all right. Well, anyways, uh, <clears throat> premier championship wrestling, you guys are, uh, are running relatively monthly other than welterweight. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. is an event every month that turn us off. We, we were by, by the time 2018 is all said and done, we're on pace to do 11 premier events and two welterweight. So 13 nice. and 12 months. Nice. And, of course, you can check out all that stuff on the social media. 
the social media is uh, there's a premier social media and a welterweight social media. Welterweight Wrestling on Facebook and Instagram. Welterweight PW on Twitter. Uh, and for Premier, it's Premier Championship Wrestling on Facebook. It is Premier Wrestling Cleveland on Instagram, and it is PCW Cleveland on Twitter because Twitter doesn't give me enough characters to write out the name. <laughs> um, but um, I'm usually manning a lot of that, 90% of it at least, and in addition to my own social media. So I'm always trying to stay busy and, and keep the content up. And, and again, I think uh, – the magic of Premier and Welterweight are really finding the guy, much like PWO and Prime, finding the guys on the cusp. Mm-hmm. So it's good to follow that journey. And and guys, guys that you, your fans and your viewers and, and your audience know very well, like Andrew Palace, Lee Moriarty. Uh, we talked about Sean Phoenix. We talked about the Cogers. Um, guys like that, that, uh, you know, Chris LaRusso, Gory, uh, Remy LeVay. Um, Guys that are, you know, Duke and Gannon. Guys that are maybe just the right set of eyeballs away from a life-changing moment, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And we get to see them and be a part of their journey every month. And that's still the coolest thing to me. And I I look forward to uh, continuing to watch those guys grow. And I hope the people at home will do the same. Awesome. Go check it out. Of course, we carry your shows over on uh, digital download, rental, or purchase over on IndieWrestling.us. And don't forget... Any young wrestlers need to listen to my rant about social media mm-hmm. and protecting the business and protecting yourselves and not being a badass in the ring and then going home mm-hmm. and posting Instagram pictures of you cuddling with a bunny rabbit. Works for Alistair Black, though. Exceptions to everyone, my yeah. friend. <laughs> there you go. If everybody else was Alistair Black, then we'd have a different conversation. That is true. He's allowed to because he can kick your damn head off if you don't like his... Because he's a badass and you believe it. That's right. With cats. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, Premier Wrestling also a part of, uh, as well as a lot of Joe's history. <laughs> Baby Joe. I basically, I basically signed my life over to you. You kind of did, yeah. <laughs> Your entire Cleveland, Ohio uh, career like, I, I was on is Indi- on Indie Wrestling Network. I was on Indie Wrestling US the other day. I'm like, how do they get my home movies in my front yard? Yep. Yep, all up there. Like I'm learning to ride a bike on Indie Wrestling US right now. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised. I got some documentary ideas that we might be popping up there. Oh man, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. And maybe if you if you guys keep subscrib- subscribing, there's been a lot of. Of course, we're doing original content over there, and maybe we'll we'll start a show of just uh, uh, Joe doing his Jim Cornette impression every week. <laughs> Uh, viewer discretion advice for that. One, oh though. yeah, I, I can't hey, do that without just like just like meeting Jim Jim Cornette in person. There's uh, there's a difference between my Jim Cornette impression and my impression of Bruce Pritchard impersonating Jim Cornette. <laughs> it's two completely different things. Yeah, uh, that will be a special one for somewhere down the line. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, and uh, until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. Sing, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sipping track This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com